Yes guys, what's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. Sorry for the lack of content yesterday, but there just wasn't enough content to talk about. So I've decided to combine it all into a video for you guys today. But there's some transfer news to go through. There's also a couple potential leaked colorways for next season's home and away kit that we're going to have a look at and discuss as well. But the main focus of this video is going to be Barcelona potentially interested in signing Antonio Rudiger in the January transfer window. We're going to delve into that in this video today, but before we start, as usual, please smash that like button if you guys haven't done so already. Hit that subscribe button, and if you're feeling generous, press the bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever we release any new content on this channel. And yeah, let's go straight into the news today. Ronald Koeman is looking for a new centre-back in the January transfer window, and Barcelona have given him the OK to try and look for other options, with Samuel Umtiti looking more and more likely to be leaving the club in January. Now, also due to financial implications caused by the pandemic, Barcelona are really struggling for cash and have been asking players to take a pay cut to try and help the club cope with a £200 million loss that they've made this year. This means that Coman has limited funds for a centre-back and that means his options are very, very scarce. And his number one choice was Eric Garcia from Manchester City, but they are struggling to meet Man City's 13.5 million valuation for the defender. In his case, they do look more likely to be waiting for the summer transfer window when his contract expires and he's a free agent, as opposed to trying to sign him for £13.5 million now. But Barcelona are also looking for reinforcements now and they can't really be waiting another year until the summer to try and get another centre-back. So Barca are also looking for other short-term options that they can try and look for. And Joel Matip and Antonio Rudiger have both been earmarked as potential transfers for them in the January window. Now, Rudiger makes a bit of sense. I will say Joel Matip doesn't really make too much sense with Liverpool's defensive issues this season and Van Dijk and Joe Gomez out for extended periods of the season. I don't see any reason why Liverpool will try and sell another centre-back. It doesn't make any sense. Rudiger, however, does make a little bit of sense. Not in terms of the style of play. I'll be real, that seems like another baffling signing, but that's just typical Barcelona at this point. But Rudiger, in terms of a transfer and a move, it does make a bit of sense. He has fallen down the pecking order in 2020. He came back from injury as our potential number one starter. And he's fallen down to fourth choice and potentially fifth choice as the seasons progress. To, to be granted, he's done it himself. It was his form that's pushed him down and there's been other players that have been impressed in centre-back position as well. And also, it'd be a real struggle for him to try and break that Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva partnership for him right now. But he has fallen down the pecking order. He, he did try and stay and push away and move to Tottenham on a loan deal in the summer because he wanted to try and fight for his place. And he thought he'd endear himself more to the Chelsea fans if he stayed and fought for his place as opposed to trying and playing for one of our biggest rivals in Tottenham Hotspur. But it hasn't had much of an impact on his game time since. He's had one game, he's had one start against Krasnodar due to injuries and a lot and a massive fixture pile up at that period in the season. But ever since then, he still hasn't had a lot of game time. And with the Euros coming around in the summer, it does look like he will he will potentially be leaving to try and fight for his spot in the summer. Now, if this move goes through, it definitely is a panic buy, but with the state of the market right now, with how the pandemic's affecting everyone's funds for the season, and with Barcelona's desperation to get a centre-back, it does make a bit of sense. I don't see how he fits Barcelona's style of play. I think he's very shaky on the ball, plus I don't think his long balls are going to be something that's really going to please them, but if they are looking for him, I won't say no to it. He is our fourth slash fifth choice centre-back. I wouldn't mind us keeping him for depth, but I also understand why Rudiger would want to leave the guy does want to play for Germany in the Euros he has tried to give this first half of the season a good try to try and get back into the starting lineup but he hasn't he hasn't succeeded so far I do feel like he'd be the sort of the, the sort of player that Chelsea might try and rely on towards the later stage of the season when players start to tire out or start to wear out and then you need some fresh legs or some experience Antonio Rudiger would be a great name and a great player to try and look for but you also got to understand the players' needs as well. The guy wants to play for Germany. It's becoming very hard for him to try and break that starting eleven. And Frank Lampard's also been pushed to try and have a have a strict uh, defensive lineup and stick to the same back four instead of always chopping and changing, which was a very regular feature of Chelsea last season. So even as we progress to the later stages of the season, do you expect Antonio Rudiger to get the game time that he wants? Potentially not, which is kind of why I see he why he could be looking for a move right now. 
Do I think Marina would let him go on the cheap as well? That's also another question mark because I'm not so sure about that. He does have two years left on his contract, but he also has some resale value, meaning that they'll likely have him sign it on a 12-month extension before he goes out on any sort of loan deal. I could also imagine that the loan deal would be a bit steep knowing our history. You already know Ross Barkley literally leaving for 11 million on loan, which is only 4 million off what we originally signed him for in the first place. But if it's a short term deal, I think that might be the case that makes sense for both parties. I'd be really surprised if Barcelona actually signed Antonio Rudiger. Also, because I know Marina's going to try and get as much as she can on the original transfer fee that we got for Rudiger anyway. So, if Barcelona are trying to get a player on the cheap, realistically, Chelsea are not the club for you because Marina is going to rinse you for every single penny that he can. Um, Short term loan deal makes the most sense out of everything. I think it gives Rudiger that little bit of game time to get him back to Euros, but it also allows him to come back if with a potential impressive loan spell and try and fight for his spot again at Chelsea. Um, also does well for him to get back into the Euros. It gets Barcelona that short term defender that they need. And for Chelsea, also takes 150k off the wage bill every week for the foreseeable future for the next four months. So, all in all, a short-term loan deal I do think is a more realistic option for all three parties. I'd be very surprised if it was a transfer. Not too surprised with Barcelona's recent history of transfers, but I would still be surprised they actually go for Rudiger as their cut price transfer because it will not be cut price under Chelsea. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you guys want to see Rudiger go to Barcelona or if you guys want to see him stay. And let's move on to the next piece of news. Second piece of news and first photos of Chelsea's potential new home and away kits for the 2021-22 season have been leaked by footyheadlines.com. Now, all kits are still in their very early stages, so we don't really know too much, but we can get a few hints of what the potential colorways may be based off the photos that have been leaked. And the home kit shows a move to a more lighter shade of blue compared to recent seasons. The secondary color looks to be the biggest change on the home kit, which is moving to a shade of yellow instead of the traditional white accents that you usually see as the secondary color on, the, on Chelsea kits. And what this does mean is that the free logo will potentially be yellow as well, which when putting it to your imagination, does give you an idea of what the kit will look like and it does seem like a decent kit you do need to understand that Nike also like trying new things and that's why we're seeing this yellow accent on which is the first time that we've done yellow for ages if you're taking away the centenary FA Cup kit that we were wearing last season it's the first time we've wore anything close to the color yellow as a secondary color since the 12-13 season after we won the Champions League, but that was more of a shade of gold compared to yellow, especially just like in the 05 or 06 season as well. But it does feel like a little nod to the 1970 FA Cup replay kit worn against Leeds, as well as the commemorative kit made for it last season and worn in the third round against Nottingham Forest. Now, it is a bit early and there also isn't really a lot to go by, but from what I'm seeing already, I do like the early photos. I think the shades of blue and yellow complement each other very well. And it is something different, which we do need to get used to the fact that Nike are always aiming to achieve. It's something that I've had to adjust to as well. I've got very used to Adidas kits where they always try and work on template kits. And they always look nice, but you always see kits that have like a look to an back to another kit. And when you go, go and look at a Nike kit instead, where they're trying something different as, as opposed to home kits of last season, it always takes a little bit of time to grow into. And I do feel like it's the same case for this one. But if it's just based off the colours already, I think the colours really complement each other very well. And depending on what the potential leaks come out as well, based on my imagination, it does seem like a decent kit. But guys, you let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. We do know as well that Chelsea will be returning to a yellow kit for their away kit after two seasons. And there have been two separate leaks of the away kit that have come out, which also gives me the idea that one is going to be the away kit and one is probably going to be the training kit. The first kit that we're going to be looking at gives a reminder to those old Chelsea training kits from the 16-17 season when Carabao was making its debut as our training ground kit sponsors. And it also just feel like a throwback to Chelsea's 07 away kit. I remember getting that when I was like 9 years old and thinking that would glow in the dark. But it does feel like a very similar look to those sorts of kits. It's the sort of limish green primary kit with a black colourway for the secondary colour as well. The black night tick gives as well gives the impression that this kit will only be having two different colors meaning that it's very likely the free logo will be all black as well which again if you use your imagination can give you an idea what you think the home kit will look like 
The second potential away kit also hints at an inverted version of the leaked home kit, with royal blue replacing the shade of black that we initially saw as a secondary colour for the other potential away kit leak. And this colourway does add a bit more colour to it, making it a bit more interesting to the eye as opposed to a green and black template, which does look good. But visually, all I can see right now is those training kits, which really doesn't help my imagination. It was really scarred by the big fat Carabao logo that was just blocking it all the time. This colourway does feel more colourful to me. It gives off a bit of a 1415 vibe, maybe a bit of an 1819 vibe as well. But that one didn't have the all blue Chelsea badge as opposed to this one, which does. But also a potential leaked jacket design does make it look more likely that Chelsea will be wearing the yellow and black combination with a similar design featured on it but with a trippy little checkerboard design added that I can't lie, I do need to grow into, it doesn't really look like my sort of flavour but the away kits look decent, the home kits look decent as well all in all I do want to, I feel like I do need to grow into it I also do need to actually see a better leak of the design as well, but it's giving you an idea of what the colorways are going to look like for both shades of kit. I am really excited for what the home kit is going to look like because those colorways do look very interesting. Now, we can't be too surprised that we've gone for a yellow colorway for our away kit. It's been a bit of a tradition for us over the last few years. Six yellow away kits we've worn since the turn of the century. And we all, know, we all know Chelsea only seem to mix between black, white and yellow for their away kits. So you never really expect to see too much of a difference. But I do like both colorways. I do hope the yellow and blue one is more likely to be the away kit than the yellow and black one. Because I do think that one's just a bit more bland compared to both. But both of them still look decent and honestly just thinking about them with the free logo they both seem to come off well in my mind so i'm hoping it comes off just as well for you guys but guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below let me know what you think about the potential colorways for chelsea's home kit and away kit for the 2021 22 season let me know down in the comment section below but guys this is the end of the video for you guys today let me know if you guys enjoyed this sort of content and if you guys want to see more of this as well let me know down in the comments also let me know your thoughts on anything i've spoken about as well if you agree or disagree down in the comment section as well don't forget to like and subscribe to carefree lewis g all my social social media links will be down in the description below don't forget to like and subscribe to carefree lewis g as well and i'll see you guys very soon take care and up the chels